I grew up in a house built back in 1959 or 1960. My parents picked it up in 1995 where they lived for a full year before adopting me in 96. There is no public information on who owned the home before my parents moved in, but the 35 to 36 year period of time before they bought it lends itself to having at least one to two previous owners. My parents never talked about who they bought it from. Anyways, as a kid, I was pretty adventurous. I would go exploring in the attic and even found a secondary attic not connected to the main one, accessible only through a hatch in the spare bedroom. I never really went up there because there wasn't anything interesting, or so I think. Maybe I'll revisit it the next time I'm around. The one place I did not venture, however, was the crawl space. We have a finished basement with a door leading to the crawl space, which is about four-ish feet tall. I'm 5'11 and have to crouch to walk around it. Now, I already didn't like the basement very much and I absolutely hated being down there alone at night. Straight up bolted upstairs when I had to turn the lights off when I'd cash out for the night. Both the dog I had at the time and my new one are not huge fans of it either. I'd rarely catch them alone down there, but one day I was feeling ballsy, I guess, and I decided to go exploring when I got home from grad school, before my parents got home from work. I opened up the door to the crawl space, and my dog Travis waited anxiously for me at the entrance. Neither him nor my current dog Rico ever went in there, or even went near the door. Well, I made my way towards the back of the then gravel-laid flooring, past all the storage bins my parents had placed in there, and rounded a corner by a moderately sized sinkhole. The gravel was lower there for some reason, what I found was a chair and mattress pad with a blanket folded up at its foot, like one might find at a PADS facility. I noped out of there and shut the door. When my mum got home, I told her about it, so she went in, not believing me, and upon exiting, looked as bewildered as I. When Dad got home, he did the same. I asked them if they knew anything about it, and they said they had never seen those things before, that they did not know how they got there, and that they had admittedly not been back to that part of the crawl space in years. They removed the items and never spoke of it again. Edit. There was also a Bible, Protestant I believe, which was obviously not my parents's, as they are Catholic. It was sitting on the chair as well now that I think about it. It's not uncommon for homeless people to find comfort in religion. But hey, maybe the squatter heard some spooky stuff too. Now, that is all verifiable fact. What follows 
are my personal experiences that my parents have and will probably continue to deny. Growing up, I had often noticed some weird things. Objects in my room moving from the place I had left them. I figured my parents just lied when they said they hadn't gone in my room or moved anything, which is fair enough. Stranger, I heard shuffling coming from the kitchen, which I chalked up to my dog until he had passed away, and I continued to hear it from time to time. I would hear cabinet doors opening with a distinctive magnetic click and creaking of their hinges, swinging open slowly. I heard plates rattle or slide. I figured maybe one of my parents were up moving around getting a snack and such. Only, I am a night owl and would stay up far later than my parents, reading in my room at the end of the upstairs hallway. Their room being right by the wooden stairs. Now for the freakiest part. That hallway creaks under the weight of a human walking on it. I, of course, had learned to navigate it without the creaks, but the sound of my mother or father walking down it was undeniable. The stairs were even more challenging, as I would have to get on all fours and equally distribute my weight for them not to creak. Well, during the silent hours of the night, when I was up far past when I should have gone to bed, and when my parents had already been asleep for hours, I would hear that rustling, those hinges open, those plates slide, but never the fridge open, strangely enough. Even scarier, though, were the footsteps in the hallway. I would hear the distinct sound of someone walking with shoes or boots on wooden floorboards, but the boards would not creak. Granted, my room is at the end of the hallway next to the bathroom. I would often explain it away as my mum or dad coming down to use the bathroom late at night, which sometimes it was as the light would turn on. I'd hear them use the bathroom and flush, and the light would go off, and I'd hear them return to their room. Only sometimes, the light wouldn't go on. The footsteps would stop at my door, and sometimes, I'd even hear the slightest rattle of the doorknob being touched, but never twisted, nor opened. I'd become hyper aware, my heart racing, and my hair standing on end. In those cases, I'd never hear footsteps return to my parents' end of the hallway. My dogs would also act strangely from time to time, frequently sitting bolt upright and staring at nothing. Recently, I had an experience, possibly a sleep paralysis induced nightmare, but I felt as though I had real physical sensations leading up to it, of Rico and I cuddling until he stood, bolt up in my bed, staring at the doorway. I grabbed his collar and blinked, only to open my eyes and see a white figure hovering with no legs in the frame. He got anxious and began to try and escape my grasp. 
and as I blinked again, the figure began to float towards me. I decided I wasn't going to take him down with me, so I let him go, and he sprinted out of the room. I blink again, and I see nothing but a misty white, unidentifiable face, at which point I clamped my eyes shut, I felt my face turn to ice as I blacked out, waking up hours later in the late morning, after the sun had already risen, the only other memorable occurrence I have is in the basement, this time with me fully awake, I had brought my electric base and its tripod into the basement with me to play while I was bored. It was mid-afternoon, with nobody else downstairs, not even my dog. I was sitting in a chair on the other side of the room, watching TV, when, out of nowhere, the tripod, base and all simply fell over like someone had strongly tapped the head of the base on the side. Being accustomed to all sorts of weird stuff happening, I simply walked over, stood it back up and said aloud, you can mess with me all you want, but you do not touch my instruments. You got it? Never before, nor since, have I had any problems with my instruments. I have a few more stories, but they're less impressive, or more personally upsetting than I'd like to share. Hello everyone, Sinister Shaf here. I hope you enjoyed day 18 of Shaftober. Today's story was experience, paranormal or not. This is some scary stuff by Ryman Jan. Thank you for letting me narrate your story. If you enjoyed this video, then please remember to like and subscribe if you have not done so already. Also, Share this video with your friends. You can now also follow me on Facebook and Twitter at Sinister Shaft. Thank you for watching and as always, stay sinister.